Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime, the podcast for kids and their pop culture loving grown ups. And this is an inspiring story about a hidden hero of history. It's a beautiful day for a story, adventure and glory, new friends and old ones too. It's an excellent day to get swept away in a tale, so let us regale you. <laughs> oh, Reg, what are you doing up in the unforgettable tree? Oh, Jonathan, hello there. I'm simply building my family tree, of course. I just have to nail this last photograph to this branch here and... Uh... <laughs> oh, no! Reg, are you okay, buddy? Oh, yes, I'm just fine. But, uh, my quills seem to be stuck in the ground. <laughs> uh, can you lend me a hand, please? Not a problem. Give me your paw. All right, here we go. Easy, easy, and... Uh... <coughs> ah, there we are. Whew, thanks, mate. Not a problem. Uh, now, did you say you were building a family tree? Yes, that's quite right. Tacking the photos and names of my family members to the unforgettable tree. Oh, uh, well, Reg, I've got some good news and some bad news. Oh, no. Uh, tell me the bad news first. A family tree isn't an actual tree. It's not. But what is it? Well, that's the good news. A family tree is something you can write down on a piece of paper to take record of your ancestors and family members. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> That's far easier than climbing up this ridiculous tree. Yeah, like I said, good news. All you have to do is write down their birth dates, where they were born, and who they're related to and how. When you're all done, all of the lines that connect the family members will sort of look like a tree. That's why they call it a family tree. They're very fun to make. Well, what are we waiting for? Shall we start writing everything down? I have quill pens and spades, <laughs> but I seem to be lacking paper. I think I have some at my house. Lead the way, my good sir. Later at Jonathan's house. Uh, Reg, why are you talking like that? Talking like what? But you were just... Weren't you... You were... Oh, never mind. Uh, let's see here, if I can find... Aha! Here's the paper. Oh, hand it here. Now, let's begin. First, write down your name inside of a box. A box, you say? All right. Reginald T. Hedgehog. Done. Now, draw two lines at the top of that box with boxes at the end of each line. That's where you'll put your parents' names. Richard Hedgehog, my papa, and Regina Hedgehog, my mama. Great job. Now, keep going back in time, writing down all of the ancestors you know. Let's see. Uh, there's my grandfather, Sedgwick Hedgehog, my great-grandfather, Hedgemont Hedgehog, my great-great-grandfather, Engelbert Humperdinck Hedgehog IV, of no relation to the singer and all relation to me, Reginald, and then there's my great-great-grandmother, Frida Hedgehog of Fairy Quill. Fairy Quill? Oh, where's that? Oh, it's a land far away from here, where most hedgehogs are from. In fact, Frida was the first in my family to come to Once Upon a Time land. She came all by her lonesome when she was a young girl of 14 to follow her dreams. Gosh, that must have been scary for her. Oh, I imagine it must have been terribly frightening. I bet she was very brave to leave the only home she knew to immigrate here. Immigrate? Uh, what does that mean? Immigrating is what a person does when they move into a country that they weren't born in or aren't a citizen of. Ah, yes. Well, that's exactly what Frida did. Immigrated to Once Upon a Time Land. You know, that reminds me of a personal hero of mine. 
Does that mean it's time for a story? I think it does, Reg. I think it does. Of a true hero of history? That's right. Oh, cherry, cherry, pip, pip. <laughs> Today's hidden hero of history is... Emma Lazarus. She was a writer, a poet, and an activist that was born in 1847 and lived in New York City. An activist? Uh, Jonathan, could you remind me of what that means? An excellent question, Reg. An activist is someone who works really hard to make the world a better place by speaking up and taking action for things that they believe are important. Well, then I must be an activist. I'm speaking up constantly. Well, perhaps you are an activist, Reg. We can all be activists if there's something we believe in that we want to stand up for. I'm also standing up constantly. Uh, true. Emma Lazarus stood up for the rights of Jewish immigrants who were fleeing Russia and arriving in the United States in the 1880s. <gasps> Just like Frida Le Fleb Le Fleb Le Frida Fleg Fleg and Fleg Le Fleg Le Frida Fred Quarky Yep. No, oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> yes, Reg. Many Jewish people fled Russia, just like Frida left Fairy Quill. There were a lot of Jewish immigrants fleeing Russia at the time because they were being treated unfairly simply because they were Jewish. That's preposterous. That doesn't seem fair at all. They can't help who they are. That's what Ms. Lazarus thought, too. You see, she came from a Sephardic Jewish family. In 1654, Long before she was born, the ancestors on Ms. Lazarus' family tree fled a country called Brazil, where Jewish people were being treated unfairly just for being Jewish. Just like the Jewish people in Russia. Correct. Because of Ms. Lazarus' background, she felt a connection with the new people coming to her country. Even I feel a connection with them, and I'm of hedgehogian background. You know, I do too. I know I haven't experienced anything like moving to a brand new place where I don't speak the language or know the customs, except for the land of once upon a time. Up, oh, true. But I had you to teach me and welcome me when I stumbled in here. And I'm the best tour guide. I even have an Ask Me Anything badge I carry around just in case. Exactly. For the folks immigrating to new countries, though, I can imagine it's got to be difficult. And it's a good thing to welcome people into the place you live and make them feel safe. A mitzvah, some might call it. Hey, you know what, Reg? Mitzvah is the word Jewish people use to describe a good deed. How did you know that? I know things, Jonathan. I know things. I don't doubt it. Well, Ms. Lazarus did a lot of mitzvahs in her lifetime, including starting a school. A school? A school called the Hebrew Technical School. Because the Jewish people were being treated so poorly in Russia, they didn't have a lot of skills. So when they arrived in America, it was hard to find a job. Schools like the Hebrew Technical School taught them different skills so they could go get a job and pay for things like food and a place to live. Education is of the utmost importance, I always say. It certainly is, Reg. She also volunteered to help Jewish immigrants find shelter in New York City when they first arrived. How marvelous. I agree. Her interest in the experience of Jewish people in America also showed up in her writing and poetry. Oh, right. You mentioned earlier that she was a writer and a poet. Yes. Her love for writing started when she was just a young girl. When she turned 17, her father, who was a wealthy merchant, paid to have her first book of poetry and translations printed. Seventeen? Oh, my word. What was I doing at seventeen? Oh, that's right. I haven't gotten to that age yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll write a book like Emma. I better get started. There's not enough time. Hand over that paper. Oh, uh, do you think we could finish the story first? Oh, yes, quite right. <laughs> uh, go on, dear friend. Thank you. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Ms. Lazarus went on to write about many different topics in many different mediums, not only poetry. She also wrote plays, essays, books, dramas, and a novel. My word, or her words, really. Yep, and there were a lot of words. She had written a little bit about being Jewish before, 
But when she first learned of the Jewish immigrants coming over to America and everything that they were struggling with when they arrived, she started to write about their experiences a lot more. Like what? She wrote a book of poems called Songs of a Semite, where she talked about how wrong it was to treat Jewish people unkindly just for being Jewish. Over the next few years, she wrote many essays and open letters about that very topic. There is one poem that many Americans know, but many don't know that she wrote it. What poem is that? Oh, tell me the poem. I've decided I'm a writer like Ms. Lazarus, and I need inspiration immediately. Hurry, Jonathan, hurry. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's called The New Colossus. And I think I have it in a book over... Ah, yes, here it is. The New Colossus by Emma Lazarus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. It's... it's beautiful. It really touched my heart. I feel like I know it somehow. Well, have you heard of the Statue of Liberty? Mm, possibly. She's that lady from your world that stands holding a torch like the one mentioned in the poem, isn't she? Well, it is a statue of a lady. Lady Liberty, some call her. The Statue of Liberty is a statue that stands in the upper New York Bay in New York City and was often the first sight immigrants saw when they entered the United States by ship. The Statue of Liberty was a symbol of hope for a new and better life for so many of them. How beautiful. But what does that have to do with Ms. Lazarus? Ms. Lazarus wrote The New Colossus specifically for the Statue of Liberty to raise money for it so it could be built. The poem sits at the base of the statue to this day, sending the message that all are welcome in the United States of America, no matter religion, background, or race. How inspiring, Jonathan. Thank you for telling me about Ms. Lazarus. Her love for helping other people and letting their stories be heard makes me feel like I could perhaps do the same. Perhaps my book will be about Frida coming to Once Upon a Time Land. That's an excellent idea, Reg. You already have the quill pens and paper. You just need to start. Yes, but where to begin? It has to be as brilliant as the new Colossus, and as popular as the work of famous hedgehog bard, Quilliam Shakespeare. Uh... Those are really big shoes to fill, Reg. Yes, yes, quite. And I do have rather small feet. No, I mean, well, maybe you just start with the words once upon a time and see where it takes you. Yes, good idea. All right. Once upon a time, a 14-year-old hedgehog traveled by land and sea for miles and miles from her one and only home and family in search of a land where all her dreams could come true. Dork Tales Hidden Heroes of History is a John and Character production. This story was written by Rebecca Cunningham, edited by Molly Murphy, and performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Studio Recordings. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalestorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalestorytime.com. Now, go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next Once Upon a Time. 